Obedience to authority relies on conformity, which is the influence placed on people by those who can reprimand those who don't follow or adhere to prescribed actions, beliefs, goals, or rules. However, unquestioned obedience can block paths to achievement, so a more beneficial path through quick action, bravery, and critical thinking is needed. Let's examine why disobedience is the best stance in situations that require honest and quick responses. And welcome to Four C's One Family. People who become overly obedient often have difficulty adjusting their behavior in stressful situations. They frequently follow requests or orders to avoid disapproval, punishment, and above all, abandonment by those individuals they admire or groups they want to join or remain members of. This is when intelligent disobedience is the best mode of action to take in situations that require deep thought before making decisions and taking actions. Intelligent disobedience is a term usually used to describe how service animals, usually guide dogs, are trained to make logical decisions by disobeying an order made by the person they are assigned to guide and protect. The animal must be trained to distinguish between rational and logical choices to ensure that a given command doesn't jeopardize the safety or life of the person given the command or itself. When instructing people, Teachers must remain in control of their teaching environment to help students acquire and use intelligent disobedience in ways that don't encourage protest, anarchy, or dissent. Steps must be carefully thought out to prepare students for situations that require deep thought, critical thinking, and quick action. Teaching intelligent disobedience is like walking on a thin line over fire. It is essential to explain in what situations resisting or disobeying requests or orders is a better choice because it often leads to outcomes that are viewed as positive from one point of view, but negative from another. Placing the person or whoever was selected for the task to be placed in a catch-22 situation. Most educators focus on keeping learners obedient without checking if they can distinguish the usefulness or moral value of the content taught or how to question what was presented. This teaching method doesn't strengthen learners' ability to exist in nations with dynamic cultures, especially in authoritarian nations with many rules. Teachers, trainers, and instructors are given a level of authority that learners are taught never to question which often causes tension. However, questioning what is taught and the teach are usually two different things. The goal should be to teach learners how to become responsible and independent thinkers, not mere regurgitators of book learned and often outdated information. Teachers must invest time explaining the reasons behind information taught in ways that go beyond just laying out information to memorize for passing standardized tests. Time must be spent training learners to apply their critical thinking skills backed by testable facts that are repeatable and not made up from conclusions based on dreams and emotions or personal beliefs. Intelligently questioning isn't being disobedient because it often leads to improved conclusions. When questioning authority, learners must be trained to use maturity to override their emotions and accept, respect, and provide constructive criticism. By doing so, learners as well as teachers become more capable of sharing views without fear of rejection, punishment, or cancellation. Intelligent disobedience can undoubtedly be helpful in situations involving researchers, nurses, medical interns, uh, military personnel, and other positions that rely on subordinates who are required to follow orders. For most people, obedience to authority is deeply embedded in us from childhood, enabling us to socialize properly. As a result, cultural customs heavily influence what is defined as obedient and disobedient. 
this can become a double-edged sword in many cases because a paradox exists when intelligent disobedience is infused in highly competitive global environments that demand precision and fast reaction times. Those in leadership positions often develop blind spots they aren't aware of, not because of arrogance or a superiority complex, but because of incorrect data collection and analysis. This is when subordinates who recognize discrepancies in a superior's decision must muster enough nerves to present information that may help their superior and organization make a better decision. Those in charge of making decisions that prevent subordinates from presenting their opinions based on their profession and research can create a dangerous closed-end loop that only spirals downward. Allowing coworkers or subordinates to share their thoughts shouldn't be seen as a form of dissent because from different views, value can often be found. On December 22, 1999, Korean Air Cargo Flight 8509 took off from a London airport. The pilot of the cargo craft was highly experienced. Although less skilled, the first officer was capable of flying the aircraft. However, on this day, a cultural hierarchy may have played a role in the aircraft's and crew's demise. According to the flight data recorder, the captain was unaware that his altitude indicator malfunctioned after takeoff, displaying a false horizon. But the first officer's altitude indicator and backup indicator remained fully functional. The captain continued turning or banking the aircraft in a way that caused one of the plane's wings to collide with the ground. The first officer refused to or didn't dare speak up or take action to correct his captain's misguided control. As a result of the captain's data discrepancy and the first officer's reluctance to speak up, the cargo plane crashed, killing all on board. In nations that have cultures that follow strict rules that determine hierarchy based on age, education, fraternity, social and political capital, gender, or religious status, Applying guidelines and regulations in situations that require cross-cultural cooperation becomes challenging. Could intelligent disobedience be beneficial among cross-cultural teams under these circumstances? This issue will only further complicate future cross-cultural events and cooperation. Is it possible that because of cultural and institutional hierarchies, leaders are often unable to see events around them as their subordinates do and vice versa? However, this does not mean that earned, acquired skills and experience should not be honored and respected because, without a doubt, they should be respected. If allowed, how much leeway should subordinates have and under what conditions should subordinates be allowed to use intelligent disobedience to take action that goes against their superior's requests? Should subordinates be held accountable for going against their superiors in certain situations? We often see the world through kaleidoscopes made from our own beliefs, which usually keeps us blind. How can we learn to see the world through unobstructed views and perspectives? Now, there are other types of disobedient behaviors, like civil and democratic disobedience, which are used to achieve political and social changes, and moral disobedience, which focuses on nonviolent actions that disobey laws and regulations based on unethical philosophical beliefs or prejudices. Perhaps we will discuss these topics in a future episode. I hope our presentation helps leaders and those in subordinate positions handle situations they feel they usually don't have the power to change. Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe, share, and download our podcast. Remember that we have much more in common than we think. And stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.